ಭಾಗವತಸ್ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ನಮೋ ತಸ್ ಭಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುದ್ಧ ಸಚೆ ಮುಸಾನ ಭನಸಿ ಸಚೆ ಪಾನನ್ನ ಹಿಂಸಿ ಸಚೆ ಅದಿನ್ನ ನಾದಿಯಸಿ ಸದ್ದಹನೋ ಅಮಚರಿ ಕಿಂಕಾ ಹಸಿ ಗಯಂಗಂತ ಉದಪಾನೋಪಿ ಗಯಾತೀತಿ ದ ರೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಬುದ್ಧ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ರೇಯಾ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಂಸಾರ ಈವನ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಹರ್ಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಅಬೋದ್ಧೋಪತಿ ಕಾಲ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೋದ್ಧೋಪತಿ ಕಾಲ ಈವನ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈವನ್ ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ದ ಧಮ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಬೋರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಧಮ್ಮ for t- while keeping that in mind for today's dhamma discussion i will be discussing about the vattu vattu pamasutta vattu pamasutta is the vattu pamasutta belongs to the majjhima nikaya mula panna swagga it is the seventh sutta of majjhima nikaya in the sutta buddha discusses about the defilements that pollute a person's mind and also the buddha explains about what to be expected when the mind of a person is polluted by defilements and the buddha also explains what to be expected when the mind of a person is free from defilements if we go to the sutta once while the buddha was residing in jetavana monastery the buddha addressed the monks as o monks the monks who were paying attention to the buddha said bhante then the buddha gave a simile o monks if a cloth stained and tainted if it were to be dyed by a dyer it it is to be expected the cloth to be poorly dyed poorly colored likewise o monks if a person if a person's mind is defiled or polluted by defilements it is to be expected the person to be born in woeful realm then the buddha went on further saying o monks if a cloth pure and clean if it were to be dyed by a dyer it is to be expected the cloth to be well colored well dyed likewise o monks if a person's mind is free from defilements it is to be expected the mind if it is to be expected the person to be born in heavenly abode so what are the defilements that can pollute a person's mind according to the sutta there are 16 such defilements so what are the defilements that can pollute a person's mind according to the sutta there are 16 such defilements they are called upakilesas the 16 upakilesas are abhijja visamalobha vyapad kod upanah makha palas issa machari maya sateya thamb saramb man atiman mad pamad among the 16 upakilesas the first upakilesa is abhijja visamalobha abhijja visamalobha is covetousness and unrighteous greed in ultimate sense abhijja visamalobha is loba abhijja is the attachment one has towards one's own property Visama loba is the attachment one has towards the property that belongs to another. According to another explanation, abhijja is the attachment one has towards the property that one gains righteously, while visama loba is the attachment one has towards the object one gains unrighteously, such as by stealing, by deceit or fraud. The next upakkilesa, the second upakkilesa is bhyapada. Bhyapada is the murderous intention of a person. In ultimate sense, this is the dosa. A person who has Bhyapada in his mind, he would wish the death of his enemies. He would wish the destruction of his enemies. According to Dhamma, there are nine causes, nine reasons that can cause for the arising of Bhyapada in a person's mind. The third upakkilesa is Koda. When Koda arises in a person, he would not be able to see what is right and what is wrong he would not be able to see what is harmful and what is harmless the fourth upakkilesa is upanaha upanaha is resentment or enmity it is the anger that has grown strong when upanaha arises in a person it would cause harm to him throughout the sansara the fifth upakkilesa is makkha makkha is ingratitude a person who has makkha in his mind will not like to admit another person's virtue or quality 
a person who has makkah, even if he is forced to admit another person's quality, would look down upon them. A person makkah also has the nature of not admitting the help or support rendered to him by others. The sixth upakilesa is palasa. When palasa arises in a person's mind, he would compare himself with others. He would equate himself with other virtuous, kind, compassionate, generous people and consider himself to be among one of them. When palas arises in a person's mind, he would not seek others for support or advice. The seventh upakilesa is Issa. Issa is jealousy. It is the disliking of others' happiness and comfort. The eighth upakilesa is Macharya. Macharya is stinginess. When Macharya arises in a person's mind, he, he would not like to share his own property with other people. He would not like to see others being happy and comfortable with one's, his own belonging. The difference between Issa and Macharya is, Issa arises concerning the property that belongs to another, while Macharya arises concerning one's own belonging. And it should be also known that Macharya arises with uh, Dosa Mola Chitta. The ninth Upakilesa is Maya. It is called deceit. When Maya arises in a person's mind, he would conceal his true nature. He would conceal his wrongdoings. When Maya arises in a person, he would do unwholesome deeds if he could get away with them. The tenth Upakilesa is Sateya. Sateya is fraud. When Sateya arises in a person, he would pretend to be someone he is not. When Sateya arises in a person, he would pretend to be virtuous while being unvirtuous. He would pretend to be generous while being stingy. Sateya is also the nature of concealing the true nature of objects. The eleventh Tupakkilesa is Tamba. Tamba is inflexibility. When Tamba arises in a person, he is prone to arguing. Because of Tamba, even when a person advises for one's benefit, he would take it in the wrong way and get angry with it. Uh, inflexibility is also the nature that stop, being, uh, stop a person from developing. The twelfth Upakkilesa is Saramba. Saramba is the nature of rivalry. When Saramba arises in a person, they would, they, would try to over, they would try to overtake each other. When Saramba arises in people, they try to undertake each other. The thirteenth Upakkilesa is Mana. It is conceit. When Mana arises in a person, he, tries to com he compares himself with others. According to Dhamma, there are three types of Mana. They are Hina Mana, Sadisa Mana and Sayya Mana. Hinamana is the nature of comparing oneself to another and thinking that he is inferior to them. Sadhisamana is the nature of comparing oneself to another and thinking he is equal with them. Sayyamana is the nature of comparing oneself to another and thinking that he is superior to them. The fourteenth upakkilesa is Atimana. Atimana is arrogance. It is the nature of considering oneself to be above others, either by wealth, either by health, either by appearance or social status. The 15th, upak the 15th Upakkilesa is Mother. Mother is vanity. M mother arises in beings due to arrogance. Due to vanity, beings do many unwholesome deeds. The 16th and last Upakkilesa is Pamada. Pamada is negligence. It is the negligence to do wholesome deeds. In the Sutta, Buddha has mentioned 16 Upakkilesas. In the list of 16 Upakkilesas, the Buddha started with Abhijja Visamaloba. The reason for starting with Abhijja Visamaloba is to show that Loba is the first Kilesa that arises in beings. Loba arises in beings for the first time as Bhavanikantika Raga. Bhavanikantika Raga is the attachment towards existence. It should be known that there are more than 16 Upakkilesas mentioned in the Dhamma. For example, Upakkilesas such as fear, doubt, restlessness, uh, shamelessness in unwholesome, fearlessness in unwholesome are upakkilesas that are not mentioned in the sutta. In this sutta, the Buddha mentions only 16 upakkilesas. And it, it also should be known that why the Buddha took a piece of cloth as, as the simile in the sutta. The reason for this is to show the, to show the effort. According to the simile, if a piece of cloth is tainted and if it is dyed by a dyer, it would, be pro it would be poorly dyed. But if the cloth is washed before dyeing, it could be brought back to its pure state. Likewise, a mind that is defiled by defilements 
could be brought back to purity by practicing samatha and vipassana meditation. In the simile, the Buddha explains about woeful realm and happy abodes. Woeful realm is dugati. According to commentary, there are two types of dugati. They are patipati dugati and gati dugati. Patipati dugati is the unwholesome intention that arises when performing akusala. Gati dugati is the uh, is the apaya or the four woeful realms. And as for heavenly abodes, heavenly abodes are called sugati. It is also twofold as uh, patipati sugati and gati sugati. Patipati sugati is the wholesome intention that arises when performing wholesome actions, kusala. And gati sugati is the gati sugati is the heavenly abodes, the celestial realms. If we go back to the sutta, in the sutta, the, the Buddha further describes that a person who sees the obstructive nature of these defilements would abandon these defilements. But it should be known that the defilements cannot be abandoned at once. It takes all four magga chittas to abandon the akusala chittas. By Sotapati magga, the, uh, the upakkilesas, makka, palasa, issa, machariya, maya, sateya, these six, these six upakkilesas are abandoned. By Sakadagami magga chitta, the strength of the remaining defilements are lessened. By Anagami magga chitta, the, uh, the upakkilesas, vyapada, koda, upanaha, and pamada are eradicated. By Arahanta magga chitta, thamba, saramba, mana, atimana, Mother and, Ab and Abhija Visamaloba are eradicated. Then further, the Buddha says, by abandoning all these 16 upakkilesas, there will arise avecca pasada in this noble being. Avecca pasada is the unwavering confidence, the fixed, firm, unwavering, unchanging confidence of a noble being in the triple gem is called avecca pasada. This includes his both his mundane and supramundane uh, confidence. Because of this unwavering confidence, there will arise Atta Veda and Dhamma Veda in him. Atta Veda and Dhamma Veda are the inspiration in the meaning and the inspiration in the Dhamma. Atta Veda includes the joy that arises in him when reflecting his, uh, his unwavering confidence, and Dhamma Veda includes his wisdom that arises when he reflects his unwavering confidence. According to another meaning, Atta Veda includes both joy and wisdom when reflecting his unwavering confidence, and Dhamma Veda includes his wisdom that arises when eradicating the defilements. By inspiration in the Dhamma and the meaning, there will arise Dhamma Upasanghita Pamoja in him. Dhamma Upasanghita Pamoja is the gladness connected to, uh, connected to Dhamma. By Dhamma Upasanghita Pamoja, there will arise Piti in him. Piti is happiness. The difference between Dhamma Upasanghita Pamoja Piti is Dhammo Pasanghita Pamoja is the subtle happiness, while happy is the gross happiness in a person's mind. By piti, there will arise Kaya Pasambi in him. Kaya Pasambi is the tranquility of body. By Kaya Pasambi, there will arise Sukha in him. Sukha is the ability to taste the happiness in mind. By Sukha, there will arise Chitta Samadhi in, in the noble being. Chitta Samadhi is the concentration of mind. After the noble being has practiced, has developed the mind up to Chitta Samadhi, he will be able to develop the four sublime states, Brahma Viharana. With the support of his concentration, the noble being will be able to spread his loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity to all beings in the world. When the, when the noble being has such a, uh, such a uh, concentration, he will be able to see mind and matter clearly. He will be able to see the arising and passing away of mind and matter. By seeing this arising and, mat arising and passing away, he will, re he will realize that mind and matter is impermanent. This is, uh, and this is Dukkha. When he sees that mind and matter is Dukkha, he will realize that Loba is the cause, or the cause for the arising of Dukkha. Then, when further investigating, the noble being will realize that Nibbana is the freedom from perception and that Magga is the path that leads to deliverance. After the Buddha has finished preaching this sutta, a Brahmin 
named Sundarika Bharadwaja, who was sitting, listening to the Buddha, said, Venerable Gautama, do you bathe in the Bahuka River? The Buddha asked, Brahmin, what is the purpose in bathing in Bahuka River? The Brahmin said to the Buddha, Bhante, uh, Venerable Gautama, it is believed that if you bathe in Bahuka River, that you can be free from unwholesome, that you can be free from upakilesas. The Buddha, answering his question, repeated the stanza that I chose for this Dhamma talk. Sache musana bhanasi, sache panang na hinsasi, sache adinna nadiasi, saddhano amachari, kinka hasi gayanganta udapano pigayati. Sache musana bhanasi, if one would not lie, sache panang na hinsasi, if one would not kill living beings, sache adinnang nadiasi, if one would not take what belongs to another, Saddhano Amachari, if he is faithful and generous, Kinka Hasi Gayanganta, what is the purpose of going to Gaya? Udapano Pigayati, even a uh, well is a Gaya to him. In the Sutta, we learn that there are 16 Upakilesas and how these 16 Upakilesas pollute a person's mind. When a person's mind is polluted by the, by the Upakilesas, he is sure to be born in woeful realm. As long as these 16 Upakilesas remain in a person's mind, he, he cannot escape from the sansara. But, but when the mind of a person is free from Upakilesas, he will be born in happy abodes. But to be free from the sansara, he has to abandon these Upakilesas completely. By this, we conclude today's Dhamma talk. Let's share the merits we have accumulated by listening Dhamma and preaching Dhamma with our past away relatives and our guardian devas. By the power of these merits, may all beings in all directions attain path, fruition, and nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Akha satta chubhumata deva naga mahidika. Punyantang anmoditva chirang rakhantu sambuddha sasanang chirang rakhantu sambuddha desanang chirang rakhantu sambuddha savakang imina punya kamena mame bala samagamo satan samagamo hotu yavani bana patiya kayena vacha chittena pamadena maya katang Achayang kama me bhante bhuri panya tatagata kaye na vacha chitte na pamade na maya katang achayang kama me dhamma sandit hika akalika kaye na vacha chitte na pamade na maya katang achayang kama me sangha punya ketta anuttara sadhu sadhu sadhu